My colleague Elena Cavallona and I just landed in Naples only three days after the new Italian government was sworn in, the government made up of the anti-establishment five-star movement and the far-right league. This is the first stop on our five-day journey throughout Italy. We'll go from south to north to meet Italians from all walks of life, to understand whether they're hopes, whether they're fears. This government has been called the first populist government in Europe. So it's a watershed moment for the European Union. You now have one of its founding members that is led by two Euroskeptic parties, so there's no better time for us to embark on this journey to understand how Italy got here and where it's going next. So where are we going now? We are heading to the Spanish neighborhood in the center of Naples. Uh, it's a reality characterized by poverty, unemployment and small criminality. Uh, it's a neighborhood where the Five Star Movement uh, gained more than 50% of the votes. It's really the stronghold of Five Star Movement and institutions are felt very, very distant. But Naples is also a city where private society uh, is very active. That's why we're going to meet this private foundation, which gives opportunity to youngsters, trainings uh, and uh, gives a, a perspective for a future. The Focus Foundation stands like an oasis of calm and green in the heart of the Spanish neighborhood. Its goal is to bolster the creativity of the local community through education. The state should be more present in these neighborhoods. This is why we wanted to open and give life to an experiment of community welfare, which was very successful. I think the change will arrive, but now it's too early. Italy needs time, it can't face a revolution at the moment. I think Di Maio will do something because he's a young man and knows what he wants. He gives back some of his salary, unlike the others. I'm betting on Di Maio. I hope they will do something good on a national level, but we will never be able to go against European agreements, because on that nothing will move. The only thing we have left is the hope for a better future, at least for us who are young, because there are no jobs. I believe that austerity policies in recent decades and the neoliberalism that has been adopted by many European countries have ended up leaving cities in which rights have been progressively decreasing. Cities in which the commitment of the state has diminished. So Brian, we are leaving Naples, but where are we going? We're going to the region of Basilicata uh, to meet Sergio. Sergio is a truck driver I met in the past while doing a story about the working conditions in road transport, an issue he's very concerned about. And he's also a very active militant of the Five Star Movement, and so is his whole family. Ciao, Sergio. Good, how are you? Nice to see you. All good? Yes, yes? very good. Well. Okay. An espresso in Sergio is back in his truck. He is on his way home after spending five days on the road delivering goods across Europe. The movement looks at the future, at the environment, at public schools, at public water, at the circular economy. The movement is the future. It is close to the citizens. It listens to the citizens. Sergio, what do you think about the alliance between the uh, Five Star Movement and the League? I see it as a mathematical agreement. I do not agree with all the positions of the League, in particular with Salvini's method. The extreme right method. Extremism has never done any good. The poor working conditions of truck drivers who live for months at a time on the road sparked Sergio's interest in politics. With his weekends spent at home, Sergio considers himself lucky. He can also count on the support of his employer, who agrees with some of the ideas of the Five Star Movement. 
Surely a flat tax that is fairly structured could help businesses that are currently under pressure because of excessive taxes. Today's politics is not about deciding my future, but deciding the future of my children. And they must be able to perceive the world as it will become and what policies will be in their interest. It's very interesting because it said that people, for example, prefer to bring their kids to a football match, but I prefer to bring my kids to demonstrations, also to, 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 to learn the importance of civil, civil participation in political life. Members of the Five Star Movement often meet in cafes such as this one to discuss local issues. Sergio believes these kinds of discussions and debates represent the essence of the movement. Objectively, Basilicata has an environmental emergency, and on a social level we have a serious problem, that is depopulation. But probably the two things are connected. Immigration must be controlled, and those who have the right to remain can stay. But those who cannot stay must return to their homes. We cannot have criminals everywhere. Normal common people like us need to solve everyday problems and we saw in the Five Star Movement the only hope to solve them is by offering common sense solutions. What struck you the most? What impressed me the most is that people that now vote for Five Star Movements, they used to vote for other parties from the left side or the right side. It's because this movement attracts people that cares about different topics, such as social inequalities and environmental issues. And Basilicata has a lot of problems in that sense. May the movement not change a single bit. As we say in our jargon among the militants of the Five Star Movement, let's keep the bar straight and our hearts high. A barra dritta e in alto i cuori. Where are we going now? We are going to Macerata, where the league has scored the highest record in years. How come? Well, there were a lot of problems before with drug trafficking, and people think that the flux of migrants coming in recent months is getting the situation worse. Macerata is a historical city of about 40,000 people that used to be a bastion of the left. In 2013, less than 1% of the people here voted for the league, but in the last elections, the far-right party scored one-fifth of the votes. Many here say it's because of the sudden arrival of migrants. In the town's market square, opinions are polarized. Who did you vote for? The league. And why? Because I was a hardcore socialist, but I got fed up. Excuse my language. We have to respect other people's lives and not judge them because of their color. They say that migrants come here to do nothing, but we have to understand their problems without judging them. In fact, I hate Salvini. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. At the moment, I'm looking for a room because I need to sleep, but people tell me they don't want to rent to people of color. Paolo Bernabucci heads an NGO that helps migrants integrate. He says he witnessed a rise of prejudice against African migrants in recent years. The toughest job is to give psychological support to these people because a lot of young men that are with us are scared because they realize that the fact that they are black poses a bigger risk of being hit, not only by far-right activist Chinese bullets, but by the context. A reference to a recent drive-by shooting against migrants by league activists that didn't kill anyone but shocked the nation. In Macerata, the far right can sometimes take a surprising face. Meet league activist Paolo Diop, whose family immigrated to Italy from Senegal in the 1980s. Of course I've crossed the border legally, because at that time you only needed a visa, and the borders were quite easy to cross. I entered politics and I'm dealing with migration specifically because I think that no one can understand some problems and mechanisms better than a person who has experienced it. I think that solidarity has to be based on strong things. I mean, we can't give solidarity to everyone because we're good people. We have to give constructive solidarity. So we're now heading to our final destination in Milan. What are we going to find there? We're going to see the difference between the city, where people still believe in traditional parties such as Forza Italia or 
Democratic Party, while in the interland where the League was born, small entrepreneurs have strong anti-European views on fiscal and budget policy and ask for more autonomy from Rome. We arrive on the outskirts of Milan in the Lombardy region, right at the heart of League territory. This writing says we are the masters of our home, and other signs in support of the far-right party are scattered across town. This League supporter was the only one willing to talk to us. His comments are widely shared in this land of small and medium-sized companies. I don't want to discriminate against anyone, but Italy cannot rely only on Lombardy and Veneto. From my point of view, those who created Europe didn't want it like it is now. In the end, we are Germany's slaves, 100%. A short drive away, in Milan, opinions are very different. This is the financial capital of Italy, and the central left Partido Democratico, or PD, now the main opposition party in parliament, still rules the city. Many people here believe the PD is a better alternative to the current government, support the European Union, and are worried about the direction their country is taking. So these two parties that are now at the government, I don't really feel represented by them. They're very anti-Europe and also they were fighting until maybe two months before the, the election, so I don't get how they can now work together. I don't think that the PD is the best party, but compared to the parties that are part of the government, it might be the best choice. The situation is a bit the same as in the US, where you had Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Neither was the best choice, but one of them is taking the country in the wrong direction, especially in the world we live in today. Whatever opinion Italians hold about their government, they are now paying closer attention than ever. Between hopes and fears, they know that this new experiment in European politics could reshape the future of their country and have wider implications across the continent.